Welcome back to GDPG, everybody. What's up? We're going to go to the docks. But first, tell me about that art thing you were talking about. Actually, I'll, I'll show you when... Um, okay, so... Oh, he's probably not a good example. So my only, only issue with this game mm -hmm. is... Um, I think the animations for these dialogue sequences are often not very good. Okay, he's a good example. So, you know, his whole body is, is totally fine. Yeah. The way he holds his weapon is extremely awkward. That you don't actually really, is a valid You don't point. really hold your axe like this and, True. like, he moves his arm in the axe. He does the same thing. Yeah, all of the characters, or at least most of the characters in this game have animations like that in these dialogue sequences. You know, actually, is it possible, because of the, the fact that his head is even with uh, Ubin's elbow, is it possible that they're sitting down and leaning the weapons on themselves? Is it possible that it's like one of those type of situations? It's possible, but it if that... It still looks unusual. Yeah, though, if, that. if that is the case, I don't think it's well presented. Yeah. Um, but since we don't have any props in the environment to support that, it I would assume that they're standing, especially since um, the big guy, I forget his name already, um, since he's standing. And yeah. Ubin, yeah, Ubin's standing, so... His quill. Ubin's the coolest. <laughs> I love that. It says everything about his character. Yep. Because they all hold their weapons because their weapons are a representation of who they are. Yep. Ubin holds a quill because mm -hmm. that's what he cares about. It's only appropriate, uh, spoiler alert for those of you who haven't played this game, it's only appropriate that, that Hacken and uh, Vogner wear the, or, uh, uh, wield the same weapon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, let's see. One of the governor's men at the Great Hall could find you a place to sleep. On the other hand, if you're going to join Vogner's caravan tomorrow, it might not hurt to share a drink with Hacken or introduce yourself to the prince they spoke so highly of. We should probably talk to the prince, I oh, think. Yeah, we'll definitely talk to Hacken, too, because we can uh, talk to everybody. Yeah, that's true. A strand is no stranger to Varl, but rarely sees this many. Hacken waves you over, went straight for a flagon. Vogner's the one who agreed to pass up a drink. I wasn't invited to the governor's hall. Anyway, you already missed the massacre. Every year I make the rounds collecting taxes. Every year it's the human settlements that give me trouble. No surprise. What this time? When I got here, the great hall was already full of bodies. We added a few more. <laughs> <laughs> Humans. I guess if I only lived as long as a yox fart, I might be desperate to make something of myself, too. It's not too late to start trying, Hacken. Hacken lets slip a low chuckle. Any Varl could recount his deeds, known as he is for cutting a swathe through dredge at Vogner's side in the Second War, and regularly since then. Down here, I'm a glorified bodyguard. You might have a, a point, just another reason to get back to Graf Grofheim. Soon enough, I imagine. You drink until the meat house becomes overbearing, then step back into the cool air outside. Very nice. So, Hacken and Ubin like each other, in case you couldn't tell. Here we go, we got the prince. It was pretty hard to not prince like. Prince is at an inn, guards blank at the building, a sharp-eyed Varl who must be working for Luden, a woman in red waves you over. Greetings, Prince Luden. You're with Vogner, I don't remember you. Not exactly, I've known Vogner a long time. I'll be joining you back to Grafheim. Why? I work for the king. A uh, tax collector. What do you want? I just wanted to introduce myself. Yeah. That's it. I mean, that's basically the whole point of encountering him. <laughs> An awkwardness hangs in the air. You get the opportunity to depart. <laughs> <laughs> well, our deed here is done. <laughs> uh, you're at dawn, you're awoken by a delivery of goods. At least you think it's dawn. Damn hard to tell with a sun that never moves. The governor's <laughs> crest adorns the supply leathers. Not as many as you were promised, but no time to complain now. Your guards take the treasure wagon down to the gates. A little while later, Luden and his men appear, groggy and disheveled. Moger steps forward, Vogner's quartermaster, if you recall correctly, in the charge of his unwieldy entourage of warriors. You know him only in passing. He asks if you're ready to depart, and yes, we are ready. You follow Moger and the others. Usually the smaller doors set into the gates would be enough to enter the, or leave the city, but the town guard has been told to push them open entirely. They mutter things under their breath that are best not heard. Perhaps the governor expected you to uh, draw a crowd, but there's nothing of the sort. Just frustrated, tired people. Summarizes Strand well as a whole, you think. Marvelous. All right. Here we go. Now the tough choices actually begin. And now we're on the road. Now we're on the road. All right. Here is one of my favorite features. So if you keep it zoomed out like this, you get to see those beautiful mountains in the background, like that big high what the fuck that is thing. It's probably a godstone. That's a godstone, right? I imagine, yeah. So you can do that or, or you can do this and you can get in. You can get in. You can see your little caravan moving with the giant fucking banner blowing in the wind. I actually, I think when I first played this game, I didn't even realize that you could do that. Oh, I always keep it cranked out to right here where the black box starts. Uh. Gives me the most detail. Uh, a gift, says Moger, cracking open mead cask. From our gracious friend, the governor of Strand. Hours pass with raucous laughter as the mead is passed throughout the camp. Um, eh. I think, well, okay, if we toast to Wagner, yeah. that boosts morale, probably. Yeah, we're already at great morale. We could drink a little. 
Yeah, I, I suppose. Save it for later. The le least amount of consumption. I go. like it. Yeah. Conservation. Uh, campsite, a casualty of merriment. Mogur's already kicking warriors awake when you spot Luden stalking your direction. Better wake up, you nudge Vogner. You are needed. Wagner? I don't know. Ah, Luden. Always a pleasure. You look well-rested. Wagner releases a caged yawn and receives a hard-eyed stare in return. How long to Grafheim? Ah, uh, we're only two days out of strain, you know. Come on, I'll show you on a map. And now we get to look at the map! I imagine Luden is more like, no, oh, mm. how long to Grafheim? <laughs> He's got, like, the Swedish chef thing going on. Flirty, <laughs> flirty, flirty, flirty. Uh, the world map. This is where most of the lore of the game is. Like, we don't ever visit a hundred percent of these places. <laughs> well, I bet the cool thing about this is that in the second game, we're probably going to see a lot more of these places. As soon as I maybe saw... Maybe even more than the map contains. This, I was like, oh my god, there's fucking Plains centaurs. Fucking centaurs! Holy shit, I didn't even catch that. You didn't catch that? And no. if you click on it, they talk about the horseborn. Oh, yeah. It's all connected! Yeah, and the playable, the female, or the, the, the playable centaur character for the next game that's been announced is, uh, she's female, and she's awesome looking. She uh, does look awesome. Dalalond, the horseborn withdrew during the Great Wars, now roam in nomadic packs. The warmer lands to the south are sprawling and empty as they are unexplored. Long ships that have sailed along its coast have found little reason to return. That surprises me. Do we know of any other races? The species? horseborn, the humans, and the varl are the only ones that... And the dredge, technically. Uh, that That's are true. the only ones that we... And we know that the dredge reproduce. I also like that the vast gets its own thing. You can click on the sigil and learn about the cardinal directions. Um, Sunstone, that's like an actual thing. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna get out of here. <laughs> uh, we'll get back to the actual game. I could spend hours in that. We head north, then east, past the forts. Graf Grafheim's far from Strand. Gonna be a long march. You should have drank last night, Luden. Why not take the ships to Skymerstead? What's the point of marching? The Silverstone Bay is called that for a reason. It stays covered in ice all year, and it would tear up the long ships. Too bad, though. Could have shown you all the wonders of Skymerstead. A half-sunken city crawling with dredge, Prince. Dredge and glaciers. You like glaciers? I get the feeling Luden doesn't like glaciers. <laughs> I like glaciers. Don't poke an anthill, Vogner. He seems no happier <laughs> to be here than you. Spend a few more days with the boy old friend. You'll be looking for a tall cliff to hop off to. Luden's got a shorter <laughs> wick than Hacken. <laughs> it, it describes him pretty well, actually. It does. It does. All right. Uh, camp. Yes, we are at camp. Great. Great. <laughs> Clicking on the heroes tent. I'm gonna learn something about my heroes. Yeah, now we can actually rank them up. Uh, I'm gonna rank up Gunolf because I can, and he's amazing. You you trust that you're gonna be able to keep Gunolf? Uh, I know how to keep Gunolf. Yeah, okay. And it's the pragmatic way. Uh, you keep Gunolf by telling him to let go of the treasure, and I would rather take Gunolf than treasure that you don't get. <laughs> right, right. I think you do lose some resources like uh, food or, or whatever. You they do, call yeah. It. But you get like, them back later because uh, Luden's people go back and loot the caravans, and if you yell at them, then they'll share with you. Do they really? Yes. That's fantastic. Yep. All right, so right now, uh, Gunolf has no exertion, which means he actually can't spend willpower. Mm -hmm. uh, he has three, and I'm going to go ahead and just, just knock him up to two while I've got him. So. That's fair, yeah. There we go. All right. I could also promote him a second time if I wanted to, uh, which I will not do. Yeah, I think it might be better to kind of spread it for right he now. He's the only one that I can. Do I want to save the renown then? I think I do. It's how much is it? It's five renown to uh, it's, promote him again. It's five the it... first time, ten the second time, uh, fifteen the third time. So it would be ten of our twenty-one. Well, if we promote him again, we still have the five to promote the next person. Still have ten. Actually, it, I mean, we could promote two people next time then. Yeah, so. Solid. Sure, let's do it. Um, I'll promote him again, and I'm going to go ahead and give him a second willpower, so that way I can use both twice. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go ahead and just increase his armor break. You think no, so? I, no, he's not an armor breaker. He's a, he's a hitter. That's that's what I was going to say. And he, he maxes out so quick that it's kind of not worth it. Yeah, he if I, if I put one in now, then next time I level him up, I can just throw two in strength, and then he's done. Mm -hmm. Or I could throw one in armor, and then kind of like fuck around with him. I don't know. I, I think I'm just going to do that. That's, that's my vote. All right, cool. Got to so, kill things faster. Exactly. We're done here, and now we're going to get on the road? Yeah, is that what we have to do? I, I don't really need to train because I know how the game works. I don't need to rest because we're at great morale and everyone's fine. Here's a question for you. Since we're doing the pragmatic playthrough, does resting should we avoid resting at all costs? Yes, resting is <laughs> deeply inefficient. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, that just made things a lot more challenging for oh, yeah. us. 
are just men driven from strand with nowhere else to go. Why else would I love that the camera kind of does one of these where it swoops in and then back up. Yep. I like looking at the varl and you're like, oh yeah, there's all these guys walking around and you're like, oh wait, <laughs> that's the guy. <laughs> that was, I think that was really smartly done too because other than that, you don't have a very good sense of scale. The battlefield sort of works, oh, but I think that does better justice for, for looking at the scale. Because you're at a three quarters turn or an isometric view in battle, so yeah. even then you kind of lose some of that sense of height. That's mm, true. You get width, but... That's true, but you don't get a sense of, of, like, even here, like, it's clear that his forearm is, like, the size of this guy, <laughs> but still. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, fighting and something else. Uh-oh. Oh, here we go. Ah, it's Dredge. It's Dredge. Oh, okay, so this is when we're first introduced to them. Yes, and this is Luden. Oh, that's right, because Ludin just kind of charges forward, right? Yeah, he just kind of, like, goes out and does a thing. Which is a fun excuse to teach us how Ludin fights, or at least how sp Hooray. spears work. See, the funny thing is Ludin's actually a really good character. Ludin is fantastic, actually. He's got really good armor penetration. He's got unreasonably high strength at higher levels. I mean, um, Ludin's, like, the fastest one to piss you off as a player, because oh, yeah. you're just like a... I'm so tired of your bullshit. Everything about you is awful. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and hit... Sundering impact was not worth it at all. I don't know why I did that. I'll be honest. Yeah, that was, it was wildly it was, inefficient or didn't, uh, didn't not actually effective. Do anything. I mean, at least it knocked down one of his armor points, but ultimately, not that important. No. If I hit this guy, I can knock off four health. Yeah, what's our guy's armor is generally around what like. Seven or eight. Seven or eight. Nine in some cases. Oh, 14? Jesus. Okay, so so with that, he's only going to be dealing one damage to most of the characters. Yeah. The calculation was almost never worth it to me. It was always just like, big number, good. Small number, <laughs> bad. Like. <laughs> well, there, there's an efficiency point to it, right? If, yes. If you can knock them down to their health is exactly where your armor is, then they can and suddenly, damage to you. well, they, they can deal one damage to you. Yeah. Um, and I generally never rely on that that chance to miss. It's it's worthless because mm -hmm. you can't rely on that in your calculations. Bingo. Um, okay, so that guy's crippled and done. I'm gonna leave. Oh no, I'm not gonna leave him alone. He's summoning a guy. He gotta die now. Yeah, that took me a while to actually figure that out. Oh. When you see that, right, and you're like, well, he's up to something. I don't know what it is, and I don't really want to find out, so I generally killed them before I saw it. <laughs> yeah, I thought you meant like you just like would let them get it off, and then they would just keep bringing more, and be like, why is this happening? But no, I, I, if you kill them right away, then you never figure out that it's that's what they're doing, that they're mm -hmm. summoning more, yeah. Although, an interesting question is, have you ever tried uh, letting them just like keep summoning more guys so you can rank up your guys super early? I tried that once, and then yeah. I... Overextended myself. Let's say. <laughs> and, and got a little party wiped. <laughs> yeah, a little, a little party wiped. That is a, a feature later on in the game, though, where you can like just keep fighting waves after waves. I really hate that this is how the initiative system works in this game. That, what? Like once, once he's down to one guy, he gets to go like three times as often as you do. I, I agree. I, I think that was their way of trying to balance it out. But at the end of the day, I don't think it has enough logical yeah. value to make that make sense. Yeah, but then again, this is, you know, it is a tactical game, but the tactics aren't, uh, it's not about managing an initiative roster like Final Fantasy Tactics is. It's more about managing your own units, like health and armor, and choosing when to set up an attack and when to finish an attack. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I, I think maybe the, the logic behind it is that if multiple enemies are focusing on one target, mm -hmm then they they have to take turns combating, mm -hmm. otherwise yeah. they're going to hit each other. Um, either that or the reason is actually to help prevent players from getting killed. Um, oh, yeah, because like, if, you're, if you're playing as... Now, but see, the problem with that is that if you're, if you're facing like three guys and you've only got one, you're going to get party wiped. Probably. You're there, just going to get worn down. What, isn't there a mechanic for last man standing when you have one person left in your party? I wouldn't know. I've never... Lost a fight that hard before. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. Hopefully, you try to get yourself. Oh, I should tell you, this is kind of a funny thing. Um, so yeah, they're talking about the dredge. Oh, Vogner's dead. Oh, spoilers, guys. Spoilers. It's the second fight, and Vogner's dead. <laughs> when I first played this game, I was like, "Wait, did I fuck up?" Because like I just met him. <laughs> yeah. Um. 
Yeah, I oh. guess uh, I guess we'll start up with uh, Rook's story uh, next time. Yeah. Right. We'll see you in the archives. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take it easy. Jesus. Her face. <laughs> she... <laughs> I mean, I'd be pretty terrified, too, but... <laughs> That's still... That's... I think it saw us. I don't think it did. See, this is what I mean. The cutscene in this was just still images. It wasn't like that movie yeah, cutscene yeah. that we got in the first one. It's it's still images with sort of that like parallax kind of. Yeah. All right, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna start this one until until we go next. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see you in the arc. Sorry. Guys.